in our number 10 spot, we have a plastic bag. It is unfortunately no surprise that on one of the deepest dives we as humans have ever been able to accomplish, along with all of the amazing new creatures and never been explored places, there would be none other than a plastic bag. In 2019, Victor Vescovo took a dive into the Challenger Deep, which is the deepest part of the Mariana Trench, which is an unbelievable feat and not an easy task, and he was rewarded by being reminded of human trash. Despite that little finding, Victor broke the record for deepest dive, which is of course amazing for scientific advancements and research. Every time someone manages to do these things that once seemed impossible, we get closer to revealing more of our ocean's mysteries that lay at the deepest points on Earth, which is very, very cool. While it would be amazing if the dives weren't plagued with plastic pollution, at least they were able to also discover a bunch of new crustaceans and give us all a little look into what life looks like in the Mariana Trench. At number nine, we have the Dumbo Octopus. It's an octopus whose favorite Disney movie is Dumbo. <laughs> just kidding, that would just be weird. Almost as weird as the real Dumbo Octopus. Although, that is how it got its name, because it looks like Dumbo. Anyway, 9,800 meters below the surface and found deep in the Marianas Trench, you can find these dopey, kinda cute looking creatures. These creatures go from eight to 12 inches and swim using their ears. Seems cute and friendly enough, right? Well, surprising for all of us, the Dumbo octopus is actually a predator and can swallow its meals all in one gulp. These kind of octopi also fall under the category of umbrella octopuses because they have webbed tentacles, giving them an umbrella-like shape. Almost like a starfish, but with a massive balloon on its head. Luckily, we're all too big for this dopey looking octopus to feed on us, so if you want to go for a swim and see some, you don't have to worry about them eating you. But I can't guarantee that the other deep sea creatures won't be as small. In our number eight spot today, we have comb jellies. Comb jellies are gelatinous creatures that are named for their unique plates of fused cilia, which are called combs. These combs help the jelly move through the water like boat oars, and while other microscopic organisms also have this sort of mechanism, comb jellies are the largest animal with this feature. These combs are also part of the reason that comb jellies are so gorgeous to look at. Rather than bioluminescence, the rainbow light effect that can sometimes be seen on them is from light diffracting off of the combs in all different directions. Many comb jellies have one pair of tentacles, although they appear to have multiple, but that is just caused by their tentacles branching out. I'm saying the word tentacles. <laughs> these tentacles are used to help them hunt like a sort of fishing line. Aside from this, these jellies don't sting, which is always a good thing. Not that I'm planning on heading into the deep sea anytime soon. In terms of today's list, I'd say these guys are one of the less creepy creatures we've got going on today. At number seven, we have the deep sea hatchet fish. It got its name because, well, it looks like a silvery swimming hatchet. There are over 40 species of hatchet fish and they can be found at the depths of 5,000 feet. That's just over 1,500 meters. This fish may be tiny, but it does not look that friendly nor welcoming. The deep sea hatchet fish can grow between 2.8 to 12 centimeters long. So while their size and appearance may not be enough to fend off predators, these deep sea fish have evolved to form an ingenious camouflaging technique. They are also like a lot of other deep sea fish because their bodies are bioluminescent meaning they create their own light and can glow in the dark. Their light shines from their stomachs, but no, they do not have any Care Bear powers in case you were wondering. Revealing a silhouette can be dangerous in the deep ocean because of predators, but luckily for the hatchet fish, it can control its light to match the same light in the water. That's the super cool camouflage technique I was talking about. Man, that could be useful. In our number six spot today, we have the angler fish. If you've seen Finding Nemo, you might recognize these guys. This bony fish is known for its luminescent horn that is used to lure other fish as prey. There are different kinds of angler fish, but those who live in the deep sea are referred to as sea devils, which truly does feel fitting. The females are much larger than the males and can reach up to almost four feet, while the males can reach up to five and a half inches, but these little sea devils are able to eat prey up to the same size as itself. That's crazy. Luckily, most anglerfish remain so deep in the ocean that they are not a threat to humans. And even if they did live not quite so deep in the ocean, most humans would just be too big for them to even try to attack. That sure doesn't mean they aren't crazy to look at though. Just to add a little more about how strange these guys are though, these fish reproduce when the male fuses into the female and lives off of her resources until it can produce sperm. 
That sounds like a nightmare. Coming in at our halfway point at number five, we have the frilled shark. As if you weren't terrified enough of sharks, this one looks just as terrifying. Although, now that I see more pictures of it, I can't really take it seriously because it just reminds me of Jerry Seinfeld in the frilly shirt. Anyone else remember that episode? Sorry, Jerry Bear, the shark wore it better. The frilled shark got its name for its six to seven frilled gills on the side of its snake-like body. But that's not the creepiest part of this shark. The frilled shark has a set of 300 razor sharp teeth. They can grow up to six feet in size, which is 1.8 meters. Even though this was one of the first deep sea animals to be discovered in the 19th century, it's not the easiest to find. These sharks swim at depths of 16,000 feet, which is around 5,000 meters. However, it is extremely difficult for scientists to study this deep sea creature. They swim at such deep levels that when brought to the surface, they practically die immediately. Due to those reasons, there isn't much known about the habits and life cycles of these sharks, but but maybe this is just one of those things that is better left unknown. In the number four spot today, we have the ping pong tree sponge. Doesn't this name sound so cute and sweet, like something you'd want as a little pet? Well, think again. These little things are not what their sweet name would suggest. The name, of course, comes from their appearance as they quite literally look like a little tree that's growing ping pong balls, but those little ping pong balls are where it all starts. The ping pongs have tiny little hook-like extensions that are there to trap any kind of prey that gets too close. From there, the sponge slowly consumes its prey while still alive. This may not be the most vicious creature in all of the deep sea, but it is proof that looks can be very deceiving. Would you have thought that this little thing would be a carnivorous creature? It honestly was a little surprising to me personally. Starting us off in our top three, at number three, we have the goblin shark. This shark might just be the creepiest thing on this list. I don't know about you, Olivia, but how did these guys get their names? Well, let's all take a look at the massive goblin-like nose on the front of its face. Yeah, that's how it's got its name. That's how it got its name. It's not really a pretty thing to look at, but at these depths, I don't think there's many people or other fish to impress. These sharks also aren't the usual grayish color. They are instead more of a pink. Not only do these things look absolutely crazy, they are also crazy in size. Goblin sharks can reach lengths up to 18 feet. That's 5.5 meters. You probably won't be swimming near any of them anytime soon anyway though, because they live at depths of 3,000 feet. That's about 915 meters. And the older they get, the deeper they dive. A shark that intentionally swims to its grave. How cute. Same as the filled shark, not much is known about these creatures. They're almost as mysterious and sought after as real goblins. For all we know, goblins are real, and when they get dropped in water, they morph into these crazy looking sharks and keep their distance from the rest of the world. <laughs> I buy it. In our number two spot today, we have the deep sea dragonfish. These guys are a pretty strong contender for the strangest looking animal on this list. These predatory fish use their fang-like teeth to grab onto their prey in the dark, cold, deep sea environment. They have no scales and instead have slippery eel-like skin, which only adds to their creepiness level. Similar to the anglerfish, these guys have a little lighted barbel that hangs from its lower jaw to attract its prey towards it. These fish really use bioluminescence to their advantage, but they also have another, less common ability. Firstly, since many of their prey are also bioluminescent, they have a special stomach that will ensure the light cannot be seen from inside of their stomach so as to not give away their position. Secondly, they are able to produce a red glow. This glow is thought to perhaps be used to signal other dragonfish, but it is definitely used by them to illuminate and detect their prey. They are the only known fish that has the ability to both produce and see red light, as most fish can only see more of a blue light. So while these guys are definitely very creepy to look at, they're also pretty interesting and very talented. And finally, coming in at our number one spot and our weirdest thing found in the Marianas Trench is the zombie worm, aka the bone worm, also also known as the Osidax. But I like zombie worm best. These worms live at the very bottom of the Marianas Trench and the very bottom of the ocean and feed off of bones of dead animals, such as whales. The zombie worm secretes acid to help access the inner contents of the dead bones and it then uses symbiotic bacteria to convert the bones' proteins and fats into nutrients that it then uses as food. The feathery branches on the worm wiggle in the water and they pull in oxygen to keep itself alive. Females grow up to two inches in length while males are microscopic in size. Sorry boys, 
Females will collect a harem of males on their body and then the males will find their way into the female oviducts. The female then releases her fertilized eggs into the water and the worm's life cycle begins again. That is about all we know about these little ones because they live at such deep depths of our ocean. So until us humans find ways to explore the depths of the Marianas Trench, we will just have to make do with what we got. Starting off this list in our number 10 spot we have plastic crustaceans. A few years ago there were little shrimp like creatures that were found 2000 feet deep in the ocean and of course none other than the Mariana Trench. The little shrimpy crustaceans are approximately 2 inches long. You might be sitting there thinking, Olivia, a shrimp is not an interesting enough creature to have on this list, but it was when researchers looked into them further, more specifically into their bellies, when things got a little weird. After further research, scientists Scientists realized that there was plastic in the bellies of all of these crustaceans. They found PET, which is a common plastic resin that is most commonly used in the fibers for clothing, packaging for food, and for plastic drinking bottles. How did we discover a new species only to realize it had already discovered our plastic pollution? Scientists are hoping the discovery will bring more widespread attention to the plague of plastic pollution across our world. It probably isn't a great sign that it's affecting our undiscovered species even in the more difficult to reach places. In our number 9 spot today we have the glowing jellyfish. Okay, we've all seen or at least heard of a jellyfish before, so it's not the most unusual discovery, but this fancy glowing one is definitely not your average run of the mill kind of jellyfish. In 2016, scientists were surveying the waters near the Mariana Trench when they saw what looked like a glowing flying saucer, but as it turns out, it was just this new undiscovered jellyfish splayed out with its tentacles ready to catch some unsuspecting prey. Inside the bell of this jelly you can see some bright yellow bulb like lights and some bright red markings as well. The jellyfish also has two kinds of tentacles, one short and one long. No description of this guy would truly do it justice, so here's a quick video just for reference. In our number 8 spot today we have the Casper octopus. This is one creature that just might be the cutest on this list, and it was discovered a few years ago by a little deep diving robot called the Deep Discoverer. One day as the Deep Discoverer is you know, discovering things, it stumbles upon a tiny little octopus just hanging out on a flat rock all by itself. This octopus stumped scientists for a few reasons. Firstly, it kind of resembled a known common species of shallow water octopuses, but this one was found deep in the ocean. The second thing that stumped scientists was the ghostly white color they were seeing. Octopuses have certain pigments which allow them to change color, but this little guy seemingly didn't have them because he was ghostly and iridescent. At the time of the discovery, scientists were pretty sure this guy was a brand new species of octopus and even believed that it may belong to its own genus as well. In our number 7 spot today we have the Mariana Snailfish. In May of 2017, the Mariana Snailfish was caught on film at a depth of 8,178 meters in the Mariana Trench. At the time, this was the deepest fish ever recorded, which was a huge step forward for science. The fish was captured on video by a special little lander robot that was specifically designed for the crushing pressures of the deep sea in depths below 600 meters. The camera apparently had some sort of mackerel bait in order to entice the deep sea dwellers into getting close so the camera could get a good look at them. While this snailfish was an already known species, this video was able to catch it swimming 100 meters deeper than it ever had been found before. Was this guy just swimming to the beat of his own drum? Was he just desperate for the bait? Or maybe we just didn't previously know that these guys went that deep. The possibilities are endless. In our number 6 spot today we have the fang tooth. These creepy deep sea dwellers are exactly the kind of thing that you would think lives in the deep dark depths of the Mariana Trench. I truthfully think that they are so frightening so I really hope that they just stay down there. These fish are named after their teeth which totally makes sense considering the fact that these guys have teeth so large that in relation to their body size, they're the largest in the ocean. These guys have to have a special little pocket in the roof of their mouths which are used to store their teeth so that they can actually close their mouths. That is both disgusting and horrifying. The good news is that these guys do not have very good eyesight at all, but I guess with teeth like that, who needs eyes? It is currently believed that these guys hunt by just bumping into their prey, sensing vibrations and movements in the water. All I'm saying is that the Mariana Trench is definitely staying off of my list of travel locations. In our number 5 spot today we have the sponge. 
I don't know what it is about them, but sea sponges seriously gross me out. So, to my dismay, in 2015, deep sea researchers stumbled across an insanely huge sponge deep in the ocean. And when I say insanely huge, I'm talking about the biggest one we've ever found, the size of a van kind of huge. This thing looks like a huge brain and is approximately 11 and a half feet long, six and a half feet high, and almost five feet wide. Researchers explained that huge sponges like this one are integral to providing key ecosystem services, like filtering a ton of seawater, as well as the fact that they act as a habitat for a ton of different invertebrate and microbial species. Sea sponges are apparently really difficult to date, but it is known that some can live as long as 2,300 years, which is insane. So I guess while they look ultra weird and really freak me out, they aren't all that bad and do some really important work. Just another case of not judging a book by its cover. In our number 4 spot today we have the Gran Rojo Jellyfish. These guys were first discovered in the mid 1990s and weren't officially categorized as a new species until 2003. Not only did their discovery come with a new species classification, but also a new subfamily. The species was originally being called Big Ugly which seems like an unnecessary roast, but after some time, it was much more affectionately named Big Red. These guys are the largest of all sea jellies, growing to be around 76 centimeters in diameter. They have four to seven fleshy arms rather than the tentacles we're used to seeing on jellies. While most jellies are transparent, these guys are red all over. Because of their deep sea habitat, there is still so much we don't know about them, and only 23 have ever been actually found and identified, so while the research is currently lacking, scientists are doing their best to get us some more answers on these big red jellyfish. In our number 3 spot today we have the barrel eye. Okay. This guy is one weird looking fish. The barrel eye fish is also known as a spook fish and they of course get their names due to their appearance. The fish are relatively small and are best known for their extremely unusual, transparent, fluid filled heads. When these fish were first discovered there were so many questions surrounding them. At first scientists thought that their eyes were fixed in place, but after further research it was able to be determined that they are able to rotate them both up and forward. This fish is usually found motionless, just hanging out in depths of around 600 to 800 meters or 2,000 to 2,600 feet in the ocean. This fish has been known for quite some time with the first discovery coming in 1939, but it wasn't until 2004 that a photographer of a live one was captured for the world to also see how unique these guys really are. There also used to be many drawings of these guys, but never with their transparent head because of the fact that it gets destroyed when the fish is brought up from the deep sea. So, not that I think anyone is going to go diving in the Mariana Trench soon, but if you do, don't bring these guys up from their home, they're happy down there with their heads fully intact. In our number 2 spot today we have the Vampire Squid. The Vampire Squid is the last surviving member of its order and it has similarities with both the squid as well as the octopus, which might make it a contender for most threatening animal on today's list. Like the Dumbo octopus from part 1 of this video, this guy has little ear like that help it propel itself through the water, but unlike the Dumbo octopus, it isn't small and cute and sweet looking. Like a jellyfish, the vampire squid has a gelatinous body that helps it move quicker through the depths of the sea. The vampire squid is covered in light producing organs called photophores, which they are able to use in a way that produces disorienting flashes so as to confuse their prey. While the vampire squid doesn't have ink, it does have the ability, when in really dangerous situations, to shoot out a bioluminescent mucus at whatever is attacking it. Also, this squid is able to regenerate its arms. So I think this all goes to say that if you were in a fight with a vampire squid, I really hope you came prepared because he sure did. In our number one spot today we have the ghost fish. Okay, well of course I had to end off today's list with just one more deep sea ghostly creature and this one is actually super cool. This little ghost fish was caught on camera in 2016 as it was casually swimming along a ridge around 8,202 feet or 2,500 meters deep in the ocean. The 
fish is around 10 centimeters long and has translucent, scaleless skin and the creepiest, colorless eyes on any fish I've ever seen. Here's the craziest thing about this whole ordeal though. This was the first time a live fish from its family has ever been seen before. This little fish swimming along, minding his own business, has absolutely no idea that he was a huge discovery for the human scientists on land. There is still so much that is left a mystery about these guys, but any kind of new discovery is most definitely always a step in the right direction. Number 9. Massive Amphipods If you love jumbo shrimp, then oh boy this would be a treat. Massive amphipods have been found in the trench. They kind of look like massive shrimp, which is a direct result of a phenomenon called giantism. The massive crustaceans can grow to over a foot long and the challenger deep, while the ones closest to the surface only reach about 3 centimeters. The reason they have gotten so large is a part of their strategy to help them survive the immense pressure of being a deep sea survivor. A group of molecules called a piezolite were found and they help stabilize proteins against hydrostatic pressure. This helps them survive and could have a hand in helping them grow to be so large. Number 8. Glass Amoebas In order to live that far down into the ocean, there are going to be three main things that you'll have to overcome. Lack of light, freezing temperatures, and a lot of pressure. Therefore, intense survival skills are required. Scientists were shocked to find Foraminifera, a kind of amoeba, surviving down in Mariana's Trench, but with some alterations. This kind of organism is found all over the world, but usually they build hard shells for themselves out of calcium carbonate. Down in the trench, the intense pressures dissolve these minerals, leading them to instead build a kind of glass house. They have adapted to use proteins, organic polymers, and even sand, which is made from silicon dioxide. Dioxide, which forms a kind of pressure proof glass shell. A specific kind of foraminifera called xenophyphores have taken this one step further and glue sand, casts of shells, and microbial skeletons to their feces, which essentially makes a pressure proof shell to live in. Gotta do what you gotta poo, I mean, do. Number 6. Benthocodone The thing that fascinates me the most about the creatures in the Mariana Trench is their size and appearance. Why? The water pressure at the bottom of the trench is about 8 tons per square inch, about 60,000 pounds per square inch. You'd think to be able to stand that pressure you'd have to be like Godzilla or something. But that's not the case. It's close to the exact opposite. The benthocodone is a deep sea jelly that is entirely opaque and floats around in a deep red hue. Pretty delicate and really small. The opaque bell serves as a way of hiding its food in case their bioluminescent lunch signals other predators. It has over 1500 tentacles and despite its little size and delicate flesh, it can survive the immense pressure of the deep. So figure that one out. Number 5. The Stout Black Smelt this deep sea dweller has also been dubbed the owlfish due to its eyes. In comparison to its body, its eyes are like pretty massive, and we can guess why. The stout black smelt uses its massive eyes to help capture any light it can lay its eyes on. The eyes have cones in them, have like narrow cones that help them suck in as much light as possible, kind of like a vacuum for light. It is a feature they definitely need while they continue to live at depths of over 6,600 meters. Not too much else is known about this little guy, save for the fact it definitely can't stand against a squid. <laughs> Here's a video of this poor fish losing a battle with a squid. Check it out. Owlfish are predators that feed feed on small crustaceans and jellies. They have enormous eyes to help them find their food in the dim light at great depths. Number 2. The Tripod Fish Can we talk about how this fish looks like they are an alien standing on the moon? Kinda? Sorta? Yeah? Anyways, yes, that fish is literally standing on the sand. The tripod fish is yet another fish that has adapted in a strange way to live in the deepest, darkest depths of over 6,000 meters. Another tiny but mighty example, it can only grow to about 3 centimeters long, while its long, bony fins can extend to a meter, allowing it to stand. Researchers estimate that fluid is pumped into them, which allows them to become rigid so they can actually prop themselves up. If you're wondering why they want to be taller, Ask yourself that question the next time you purchase a pair of heels. By standing tall, it's got the best vantage point to capture prey, such as small crustaceans. As they float in the current, the tripod fish can just open their mouths and catch them like snowflakes. However, it is practically blind due to its habitat, so its fins sense vibrations to anticipate predators. So otherwise, it just 
cut of weights there for food. Number one, last but not least, the Mariana snailfish. Though it doesn't look like it could withstand pressures of a thousand feet below, the Mariana snailfish proves yet again the age old phrase of never judge a book by its cover. Meet the deepest fish in the ocean which thrives at 8,000 feet below sea level. Though they look small, fragile, and slightly translucent, these little guys are actually the top predator at this depth. With few predators, they get the cream of the crop when it comes to food down there. They kind of look like white fat goldfish with a long narrow tail. Its flesh is so translucent you can even see its liver through the skin. Compared to some of the other creatures on this list, it definitely doesn't scream robust survivor, but has adapted in a new clever way scientists are still trying to understand. Starting us off with number 10 are zombie worms or bone eating worms. Now this creature can grow up to being 2 inches long if it's female, whereas the males are microscopic. Now despite being worms and not sounding all that scary, they can eat rock hard bones of animals a million times bigger than them like whales. They secrete acids that allow them to access the inner contents of the bones and then the symbiotic bacteria converts the bones proteins and fats into food for the worms. They have feathery branches all over them that help pour oxygen into the worm so it stays alive. They can be found at the depth of around 9,491 feet feeding on the carcasses of dead whales. I'm okay with worms but these worms I cannot do. Now at number two is the telescope octopus found at depths deeper than 6,500 feet. These octopi don't swim horizontally, no no, they actually suspend themselves upwards. That makes it hard for predators below them to see their shape. They're almost completely transparent and the reason they're called the telescope octopus is because they have two protruding eyes that not only rotate, they also allow the octopus a much wider peripheral vision. Honestly, they're also kind of cute and small and their eyes are tiny, they're just very cute little creatures. The octopus that looks like one of those toys you'd get in a McDonald's Happy Meal. I know this because I have eaten many McDonald's Happy Meals growing up. It's my go-to order, my chicken burger, gotta have it. <laughs> 